Hello and welcome back to episode six of Fertility Friendly Food. So glad you could join me. And today's episode is all about egg quality. And this is a big one I hear you ladies chatting about in all those Facebook groups. So this is the one you want to tune into. But before I do, just want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by my free preconception lifestyle checklist for him and for her that you can now download on my website, thedietologist.com.au forward slash freebies. And you can get all that good free nutrition advice from me right there from supplements to food, both for your partner and for yourself. So on to this week's topic, which is all about equality. Now, I know we hear that saying it only takes one egg and one sperm to make a baby. But for some reason, for those who are on this trying to conceive journey, TTC journey, um, it, it feels like you just want more numbers. So you have a better statistical chance. Um, So I just wanted to walk you through a little bit about quality versus quantity, age-related egg quality decline, which is always on women's minds, and what key nutrients you can can take advantage of to help support optimal egg quality. So quality versus quantity. So quantity is often measured through a hormone called anti-malurian hormone or AMH. And this is what's really popular in the media when we talk about um, egg quality is um or yeah it often gets confused for egg quality but it's actually egg quantity so amh is just a way for us to measure your ovarian reserve and basically what that hormone is and where it's found is actually in the follicular fluid of the egg so the, this uh, where the egg is in the ovary there's a little bit of fluid that just surrounds it like a little sac and that fluid makes a little bit of anti-malarian hormone and we as women are born with all the eggs we'll ever have which is what I was referring to in that those first couple episodes about early life nutrition and why it's so important from a generational perspective but we're, we're born with all the eggs we we'll ever have and over time they they deplete even actually before we're born we've lost um thousands of eggs and by the time we hit puberty we've lost thousands more and of course you know um in our society now most women aren't getting pregnant in their adolescent years on purpose um anymore so and that's really where peak fertility is is in that short um period after you established a a menstrual cycle so anti-malarian hormone can give you a rough idea of where you stack up in terms of how long you have, I guess, is that it's that biological clock. Now, a really high AMH may be indicative of something like PCOS, having lots of eggs, which I've talked about in episode number four. So go back and listen to that one about PCOS. And if it's really low, it could be indicative of lots of different things. But one of them could be primary ovarian insufficiency, which is also known as early menopause. So simply you've you've had less eggs than we'd anticipate for your age and we'd anticipate that menopause onset will be sooner than for most women and that affects one percent of australian women so it's not unheard of so i know most of us are familiar with this kind of time is ticking kind of idea and we're always up against the clock as women when it comes to our um, fertility Um, and that's because the quality as well as the quantity of our eggs decline as we age Um, and every year we lose our AMH will decrease slightly but also the quality of the egg is more likely to decline as well as we age and this is because there's more opportunity for DNA damage to occur which is what happens to our cells as we age anyway and because if the eggs are really sensitive DNA I mean it's half of what your future child will be if that DNA is damaged there is of course increased risk of genetic um, conditions in um, women who are older who carry babies um, and also an increased risk of miscarriage and stillborn unfortunately and yeah like I said we think it's because of, of that so Again, AMH is about quantity, not quality. So we really want to be focusing on equality. So today, what I really want to talk to you about was what are some of the top nutrients to be focusing on in your diet and lifestyle that you can incorporate to boost egg quality. And the first one is about vitamin D. And there was a study of some women undergoing IVF that showed that women with sufficient vitamin D were more likely to produce higher quality eggs and were more likely to conceive. 
The second is omega-3 fatty acids, and these come from our oily fish like salmon, trout, mackerel, sardines, and tuna. And omega-3 fats are really a big hero when it comes to fertility and women's health overall. But a study back in 2012 showed that a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids showed a prolonging of reproductive function into advanced maternal age in rats compared to a diet rich in omega-6 fats. And it was also associated with improved egg quality. But it wasn't just that the diet across the whole life being rich in omega-3s had a benefit to the egg health of the, of the rats. It, they actually showed that even in a short-term period, giving the mice lots of omega-3s actually boosted egg quality, which is something we really want to be focusing on as we age as well. The next one is coenzyme Q10, which is also known as ubiquinone or ubiquinol. It's a coenzyme. It's not a vitamin or mineral like um, vitamin D or zinc or iron, um, but it's a cofactor in lots of metabolic processes that are important for energy production. And as we get older, our ability to make CoQ10 does decline. But the good news is we can get it from food, and that's mostly our protein foods like meat, fish, chicken, eggs, and the like. CoQ10 has been shown to have a role in egg health, again, in some mouse studies. Not ideal, but we'll work with what we can work with here. They showed that mice that had poor CoQ10, that this actually drove age-associated egg decline, which can contribute to infertility associated with I guess advanced maternal age or women over 35 years old. Many women going through IVF often supplement CoQ10. However, you can get it from food, like I said, red meat, turkey, oily fish, and some vegetables too. So for any vegans or vegetarians, spinach, cauliflower, broccoli, fruit, legumes, nuts, and seeds. There are certain situations where CoQ10 shouldn't be supplemented. So this is definitely, again, something you really want to be speaking to your doctor about before trying anything. The next nutrient is zinc. Now, zinc is really important in men's fertility, which will be a topic for a future podcast episode. But zinc is really important in the development, maturation and release of the egg. So being deficient, which many Australian women of reproductive age don't get enough zinc, can affect fertility. So foods that are rich in zinc include oysters, meat, fish, chicken, shellfish, legumes and beans. Um, You want to try and include something like this most days. Um, And although men have higher requirements for zinc than women, it's still a really key nutrient. And in fact, I've talked about this in another podcast, actually, with Kaya from Plant Nutrition Wellness. When the sperm meets the egg, there's actually this firework of zinc that's released when that occurs. So we think it's actually a really important nutrient at this critical time where fertilization occurs. The next, well, it's not a nutrient, I guess it's a group of nutrients, are antioxidants. Now, antioxidants have this really cool role in the body where it fights oxidative damage. And this is the stuff that wants to do bad to our cells, wants to try and ruin the DNA and unravel it and unpack it and cause damage. And that that doesn't, that there's no exception. Our eggs are a part of that DNA as well. So antioxidants actually like calm those guys down. They're kind of like the bouncers at the nightclub and they like kind of try and chill everybody out that's on the outside that's getting a bit rowdy. And so we want antioxidants to be coming in in the body. And this has been shown to help improve egg health because if we have lots of oxidative damage in that fluid surrounding the egg, we know that egg quality is poorer. So theoretically, by increasing antioxidants, we should be able to help mitigate that as well. But there's really not a lot of evidence at this point in time, but there's nothing wrong with eating the rainbow, making sure you're getting all those plant foods in, your blues, your reds, your yellows, greens, purples, and oranges, as well as white, to get that broad variety of antioxidants into your diet for egg health, as well as your general health and well-being too. So that is a wrap on my quick chat about egg quality and what the difference is between egg quality and egg quantity and a little bit about AMH as well. If you had any questions about this content today that you'd wanted to discuss, please shoot me an email, hello at the dietologist.com.au. Just a friendly reminder, don't take any supplements without consulting with your healthcare professional first. These things can interact with medications. So it's, it's important to be mindful of that. It's not the same as eating the food with that nutrient. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the underscore dietologist. I'm super active over there and join our free fertility friendly food Facebook group. Those will be linked in the show notes. Plus 
whilst you're there, go and head to my website, thedietologist.com.au and grab that freebie of the preconception lifestyle checklist. If you'd like to hear more from me and you'd like to book a free 15 minute discovery call to have a chat about your particular nutrition situation, don't forget you can just hit book now on my website for more. Until next time, guys. Bye.